let's get started. Uh, you know, let's, it, when I get started, um, I usually uh, pop in and um, I do, you know, what I, I want, like, what I usually do is I usually worship the Lord, you know, before we, um, you know, before we get into our really prayer session, because I, I believe that um, you should worship before you start, worship the Lord. And when you end, worship the Lord. So I'm going to read Psalm 8, verse 9. And Psalm 8, verse 9 says, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heaven. And Lord, I praise you. I praise you, O oh God. Holy, holy is your name, God. Holy, holy is your name, and I praise you. I give you all glory. I ask your Holy Spirit to come. I ask your Holy Spirit to touch people. Give you glory, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You know, God is worthy to be praised all the time. No matter what you go through, he is worthy to be praised. Praise his name. He's good. He's loving. He's caring. Okay? He doesn't leave us. He's always there for us. He's worthy to be praised. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then the next part of our prayer session I usually tell you to go and find a quiet place. Find a quiet place and sit. Have a notepad and write down what God speaks to you about. He speaks to us. Just start writing stuff. Don't think about it too hard. Don't think too much into it. Just what comes to your mind, write it down. Because what's going to happen is you're going to be able to read it. You'll see where the enemy's lying to you because you'll see it. You'll be able to see it right there, black and white. Okay. You'll see where the enemy's lying to you, where it's foggy. And then you'll see where God then begins to really start to talk to you. So it is really important to write it down. Write it down. Whatever, you know, during your quiet time with God in your prayer session, sit quietly and write it down, okay? Um, sometimes you, it might sound like you. It, it's, we're not concerned about all that right now. We just want you to write it down. Um, just whatever's coming to your mind, just kind of, you know, just kind of write it down. It might sound like, you know, I have a dream of this and I have a dream of that and I want to do this and I want to do that, right? Or it might sound like asking, you know, um, um, God, give me money, God, give me this and whatever. Um, write it down and see what, when you start to read it back to yourself, you're going to feel, you know, because God's going to show you, you're going to feel like, oh, now that's not of God. That does not sound right, right? It doesn't match up with the word of God. You can expose the lies of the enemy like that. And this is where I kind of coach people in a lot of times, okay? You're going to like see um, what that sounds like, what that looks like. And then, you know, what the word of God says about you know, your life and your situation, right? So you can know your word, read your word. Um, and you're going to be able to see what, you know, what is a lie 
um, because a lot of times we, we're filled with lies that we don't know about. Okay, this is where I coach a lot of people in and um, through uh, emotional healing and stuff um, when they go through my courses. But a lot of times we go day after day after day um, with these bombardments of thought pattern, right? Sometimes we go back to old thought patterns, which are just comfortable and we're used to it, right? Um, and we don't realize that those are not in alignment with the, with the word of God at all, right? We're thinking thoughts like, oh, you're so stupid, you know, stupid. Or you just keep saying that over and over, right? You had a bad day or something, or you just messed up <laughs> so bad. You embarrassed yourself or whatever. We all do. It's okay. Uh, you know, so we, we will mess up just so you know, there will be times you're when you will mess up. You know, we get a little red in the face, we get a little embarrassed, and then we just, you know, go on. Okay. Um, you know, when that happens, though, sometimes we get in this mode of, gosh, I messed up. You're so you stupid idiot. You're just dumb. You just don't know how. You're never going to get this right. Um, you know, you're going to mess up all the time. Um, you know, and it just goes on and on and on like that, right? And so when you write it down during this quiet time, um, that's when you, if you just write down whatever. You're going to see things, patterns and stuff in your writing, you're going to see, oh, whoa, that is, I wouldn't even tell my best friend, like I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't even tell my worst enemy that, <laughs> right? You know, gosh, I would, I just want to die. I just want to, you know, go, you, got, you might as well just die now. <laughs> um, and you look at that, and it's really painful. It's painful to look at, because sometimes it's just such negative things that you did not even realize and it's not of God. Okay. Um, and then you'll see some light in that writing that you wrote, that you written down in your quiet time. You'll see, you'll see moments of like, Ooh, wow. How God says, I love you. <laughs> Do you think that I'm thinking of you that, that thinking that you're dumb or an idiot or any of those things. Do you really think that I'm thinking that of you? This is what God is saying. Okay. You'll see that in your writing. You'll see that you'll write, you'll be able, because, because it's, it's so intimate with you and God. Okay. It's your thoughts. You'll think it's you and all, but you'll see the difference. Okay. You'll see, you'll see the patterns and you'll say, oh my goodness, this is God. He's saying, and it will really be intense to you, okay? So be careful. Um, you know, so it'll be really intense. You'll see that pattern go, go by um, and, then, um, and then you can pray over that. You can pray over that and weed out you know, what is not of God and then what is God really speaking to you about? As you, as you do this over and over again, you'll start to see, you know, what your life, what, what your thought patterns are and prayer patterns are and things like that, okay? This is all a part of prayer. This is all a part of teaching you some things and praying with you. Um, but we're going to read, you know, because in this time, um, I want you to be quiet, and I want you to think about that. But we're going to read Psalm 8. Uh, sorry, we're going to read Psalm 46, 46, verse 10. Psalms 46, verse 10 says, He says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations I will be exalted in the earth. He says, be still and know that I am God. And he will always be exalted. Okay. He is worthy, worthy of that. And so in this time, 
of prayer, uh, we're going to be also praying for, um, there's a lot to pray about. So, you know, I, I'm praying for the people of Ukraine and I'm praying for San Diego and I'm praying for, you know, um, all of California, really. But I want you all to know, you know, out there that, um, that you are loved. God loves you. He loves you. And he wants you to know that. Um, we're going to read 1 John 1 9. Let's read 1 John 1 9. Uh, let's see. 1 John 1 9. Um, where's that? Sorry. We're going to read Psalm 103. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As we come before this next session, this is a session, the next session where you know we confess our sins, right? Um, you don't have to confess them to me. I'm not asking you to confess them to me, but I am asking you to go before the Father and confess your sins, you know, go as in your prayer time, confess your sins, you guys, uh, God wants you to, he, to, he wants them to be exposed. Okay. He wants to bring them to the light, not to hurt you or harm you or embarrass you, but they, of course, they're going to be embarrassing. Um, but to take it and to transform it. When it comes to the light, we see it, and then we look at it, and we say, this is not what I want, okay? We have to feel a little bit of, you know, kind of, uh, it has to be a little bit of prick there, right? It's got to be uh, something that hurts us, that we're embarrassed by, that we say, I don't want that. Um, and then we give it to the Father, and he can transform that for us. It's supernatural, like I tell my grandson all the time. Um, you have a superpower. That superpower is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is supernatural. Okay, He is the one that is our true counselor, that is our, our friend in time of need, is that person that is able to convict us, to show us, to you give us words of wisdom, give us words of knowledge to, you know, um, help do the healing in people's lives. Uh, that is, comes from the Holy Spirit, you know, that comes from the whole uh, triune of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? So that is important to confess our sins. As we go down to the next part, to intercede, I'm going to read one Chronicles 1 Chronicles 4, 9. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. We intercede for others, and we do not know or realize they may be in pain, okay? Um, I deal with a lot of people as a, as a, as a chaplain, that works in the area of crisis and trauma that, you know, is a, more of a street chaplain dealing with a lot of situations that a lot of people don't see. Okay. Um, you know, I deal with all of the, uh, you know, the, the real, real bad things in the world. Um, you know, I work alongside of uh, all of our first responders, emergency services and, you know, fire departments, police departments, um, you know, the, the, what they used to call the coroner's office, um, the ME office, medical examiner's office, um, you know, and so, you know, in the area that I work in, I'm working alongside of all these different people, communicating with them, right? So, as well as people, asking me to pray for them, people asking me to coach them um, and things like that. So um, a lot of different situations and things 
that I deal with. Um, and I, but, but the thing is that I am constantly asking the Holy Spirit to guide me, to show me, to, to know what to do or say. It's hard to know what to do or say. None of us really know what to do or say. Sometimes it's just sitting still and listening. You know, just nodding our head, being that person, the cushion. So I, I, I imagine what that looks like is being a cushion, something to fall back on, right? Someone gave me, gave that analogy at one, one time, um, just the pillow to fall back on, right? When you're listening to someone, it's kind of like what you're doing. You know, that's what I do as a, as a, a chaplain or a Christian counselor, um, not a certified or licensed counselor, just a biblical counselor, a listener, um, that, you know, just to be a, a, a cushion for people, um, you know, to, to hear their stories, to acknowledge them, to, they, that they are, you know, seen, heard, and uh, loved, you know. So it's all a part of um, how we care for people. Petition for people, interceding for people, um, you know, um, petitioning for ourselves is the next one. And petitioning for ourselves is, is important, just as important as it is to intercede for others, right? Um, as we intercede for our world, people, you know, um, the refugee crisis situations, war, um, also we're praying for ourselves and petitioning for that. So I'm going to read um, Isaiah. Uh, sorry, I'm going to read. What do I want to read here? Psalm 51.10. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit in me. You know, a lot of times... As I was saying, in our quiet times, we're writing things down, we're exposing the lies of the enemy, and we're seeing where God is actually really speaking to us and comforting us. We see the Holy Spirit writing this down for us, right? We see him speaking to us like that. Um, but to renew a, a steadfast spirit in us um, is meant for us to petition for ourselves. Like before I come on here, as I'm praying for you all, and I'm praying, I'm praying in the Holy Spirit, I'm praying, you know, in, in tongues, and I'm saying, you know, God, um, you know, just fill me with your Holy Spirit. I'm already filled with the Holy Spirit, but, you know, this is kind of words that we say. We think we're going to get more, but it's already more. There's already more. You can't get more than what all is already there. But what I'm really saying what would be technically the word to say is renew, renew the steadfast spirit in me, renew me. So when we're, when we're saying stuff like, you know, uh, fill me with your Holy Spirit, give me more of the Holy Spirit. We can't get more of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we can't be filled more. We are already filled. It's all, he's already there. Um, but what? what would be the proper or appropriate word to use would be renew, renew me, create in me a pure heart, oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. It would be renew me, oh God, renew me every day, renew me that I feel energetic, that I feel feel like loving others that I want to do your will that I will that I will put fear aside and trust in you oh god that is what technically we would be we would say but, but we say you know silly things like you know give us more of the holy spirit kind of thing <laughs> um and so, you know, as we, as we come to a close, as we come to the end of our prayer session, um, what I want to do is I always end with, you know, giving God all glory and all praise um, because he is worthy, okay? It doesn't matter what we go through. It doesn't matter what our life looks like. He is worthy to be praised. 
Um, he is the creator of the universe and he loves you and knows you. He knows you, just you. You. He knows you, you guys. Um, so you are not far away from him. He is close to you. And we praise him. Praise him. Okay. Uh, I love you guys. This is Gloria, and you're watching Heart of the City, San Diego. And you can tune in um, next week on Sunday. Um, looks like we'll probably be starting more around 5.30 instead of 6, possibly. Um, but uh, I'm just getting th maybe the feel of what is the, the gr a good time. Um, but pop in with me, uh, join in with me, come into to my um, into my prayer session here, and just learn something. Okay, uh, uh, just learn something from me. Uh, a lot. Of, I don't like to share the things that I do in my emotional um, healing workshops because they're very, very intimate. They're very private um, and they're very confidential. So I, I, I've never really shared kind of what happens in the session because they're so special to me. And I just like, it's, it, it is, you know, confidential when they are in, whoever comes into my workshop, it is very confidential. So I do not share uh, anything at all and still have never shared anything at all um, of what happens in the sessions. But um, uh, I will be inviting some people to come in and pray with me uh, here on my uh, Sundays for prayer. And, um, and so... When we do that, I'm going to share with them some of the things that start to happen as I'm praying and things. Um, you know, er everyone gets used kind of in a different way. And I think that God just kind of gives me this words of wisdom. And I think that's where I also have, you know, the gift of encouragement and apostle gifts. Um, uh, but... In saying that, um, I know that this is the time to start doing some really um, intense mentoring. Uh, and then uh, I, I have uh, my board of directors, for because Heart of the City San Diego is a nonprofit. So the board of directors, um, I'm also at the same time, they're kind of coming in. And we're planning session, you know, planning different things for the year. Um, but also, uh, I'm training so many different, um, not not so many different, but I'm training um, people. I'm training them basically. I'm training them. Not that they don't know; they already know. But there are some things that that I have seen and been through and done um, that I know are proven. They always are effective and I'm a very effective kind of operator. Uh, so I really have to trust the Holy Spirit in, in some of the things that I do um, in life. You know, uh, it, it's just, that's just the way I operate. But, um, you know, in, in, in the background, um, I want to add people as admins to then start to, um, you know, work in the background and, and help with the, with the um, commenting and things and sharing these videos out, uh, especially to the rest of my platforms. And then I'll be doing some early prayer sessions, um, but they're the, the early prayer sessions will be like at 6 a.m. And they're more casual, though. They're not going to be, you know, a uh, uh, developed live stream um, type 
style, they're going to be more casual, you know, uh, as I come in and pop in and pray early in the morning. Um, you know, I don't think anyone is like ready to pop in and be full makeup and hair and everything at that hour. But I don't know about you, but I live a real life. <laughs> but, um, uh, I, you know, go, go follow me um, on my Instagram. You can find me on a lot of different um, platforms of, um, you, can, you can follow Heart of the City San Diego but also official Gloria Medrano at official Gloria Medrano or just Google my name, Gloria Medrano, and then you'll find me. Um, the early morning prayer sessions, they're going to be on um, LinkedIn uh, because LinkedIn has their, that's an early morning platform for sure. Um, so we'll be there early mornings and, um, and then some fun uh, Instagram once and then you know lots of lots of reels that i do <laughs> but yeah follow me around and um and you know we're gonna have some fun so with that said many blessings to you from from your girl deep in the heart i love you and peace out i'm praying for you bye <laughs>